Hello everybody, we thank you so much for following us on the Summer Bible channel. This is Isaac. I'm going to share with you friends this important lesson. This lesson is 11th uh, lesson of this quarter and the theme or the subject is end time deceptions. End time deception. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, giving us this opportunity to study your word. Open our hearts to receive and understand it. And please help us to put into practice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friend, if this is your first time to watch us, please do not forget to subscribe so that next week you get notification when a new video is released. So as you have observed, we are trying to to, to making our video more 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 visible uh, I'm showing myself before I was doing audio so now I'm using video so if you find something that is I should improve please please send me a short message a comments and if you uh, also you need some of the uh, news or some of the information about what I'm saying please please send me a message i will appreciate to read it and to respond to you as soon as possible so the memory text of this week is about um, is on 2 corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 to 15 and no wonder no wonders no wonder even satan disguised himself as an angel of light so is not strange if him, his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Their end will match their deaths. So our contemporary world has become a melting pot of supernatural and mystical helped on by Hollywood, which has no problem making movies with religious and mystical themes in a hodgepodge of error and deception. So the old lie, you should will not die, also has inspired many, many books. Most read books and most watch the movies of the past few decades and many popular video games as well. So undeniably, we are exposed, we are exposed to end tainted by the ancient ground of Satan, which can appear in myriad forms and even in some cases can come hidden under the veneer of science. So it can come disguised as under, under the science and we are watching slowly, slowly and they go into our heads. So they go into our minds and you can be a victim of those false theories. So one of the most deceptive phenomena has been what we have been called near-death experiences, where those who had died have come back to life with stories of an eternal life. Many people have seen this event as a proof of an immortal soul. During this lesson, so this week, we consider some of end time this deception including mysticism, near-death experiences, reincarnation, necromancy, and ancestral worship, and others. These are dangerous subjects that we should be aware of, but without exposing ourselves to their influences. So let us see the lesson number one, mysticism mysticism. Our world has been flooded by strong waves of mysticism, friends. The word mysticism is a complex term that encapsulates a huge varieties of ideas. From a religious perspective, the word implies the union of the individual with the divine or absolute in some kind of spiritual experience or trance. This characterizes this worship. The worship characterizes the worship 
uh, the, the worship of the devil, actually. So, from a religious perspective, the word implied the union of the individual with the divine or absolute in some kind of spiritual experience, experience or trance. The phenomena can vary in the form of intensity, but the tendency always is to replace the authority of the written word of God with one's own subjective experiences. In any case, the Bible loses much of its doctrinal function, and in the Christian remains vulnerable to this experience. So this kind of subjective religion does not provide a safeguard against any deception, especially at the time, at this end time we are facing. So if you read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, we say, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who do, does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So, friends, in the light of Jesus' own words, what does it mean to build our spiritual house on the rock? So, we should build our spiritual house on the rock. There is a strong tendency in uh, this postmodern Christian world to downplay the relevance of biblical doctrine, regarding them as tedious echoes of an absolute form of religion. In this process, the teachings of Christ are artificially replaced by the person of Christ, arguing, for instance, that some biblical story of or another cannot be true because Jesus as they perceived him would never have allowed that to happen as it is written. Personal feelings and tests end up being the criteria for interpreting the scriptures or even for rejecting outright what the Bible clearly teaches, often about obedience to God, which, as Jesus said, is essential to building one's house on the rock. So we should build our house on the rock, not on the sand. And the building our house on the rock means that we should not just take light as is, lightly, the doctrine or Jesus' teachings or some false teaching. We should really go into deep and understand, study rigorously and try to understand. The Bible is a very good tool to learn. And once we know what is in the Bible, so we should not be deceived by false theories. Let us continue our next lesson. Our next uh, uh, topic is this near-death experience. Near-death experiences. Some of the most popular modern arguments to prove the theory of natural immortality of the soul are near-death experiences. So, in the book, Life After Life, the investigation of a phenomenon survival of bad death, Junior A. Modi presented the result of his five-year study of more than 100 people who experienced a clinical death and were revived. What happened? These individuals claimed to have seen a loving and warm being of light before coming back to life. This has been regarded as exciting evidence of the survival of the human spirit beyond death. Over the years, many other similar books 
have been published promoting the same idea. So we can see that there are many, many, uh, uh, many of the books about it, but we can see also that the Bible can give the answer of this one. All near-death experiences reported in the modern literature are of people considered the clinical dead, but not really dead, in contrast to Razors, who was dead for four days and whose corpse was rotting. It was rotting. So neither Lazarus nor any of those raised from the dead in the biblical times even mentioned in the afterlife experience, whether in the paradise or in the purgatory or in hell. This is indeed an argument from silence, but it's in full agreement with the biblical teachings on the unconscious state of the dead. But what about the near-death experiences so commonly recounted today? If you accept the biblical teachings of the unconsciousness of the dead, then we are left, we are left with too many possi possibilities. Either it is a natural physical chemical hallucination under extreme conditions, or it can be supernatural, satanic, deceptive experience. So let us see in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Even Satan is going to disguise himself as an angel of Satan and is going to deceive many, many people. So Satan is with those films, movies, Hollywood to try to put false ideas in our heads so that we believe on those false, false ideas. So friend, let us see the next topic which is, which is reincarnation. Reincarnation. The pagan notion of or in a mortal soul provides the foundation for the unbiblical theory of reincarnation or transmigration of the soul. This theory has been adapted by some major world religions. While most Christians believe in the existence of immoral soul that abides in permanent heaven or hell after death, those who believed in reincarnation hold that such an immortal soul goes through many cycles of death and rebirth here on earth. For some, reincarnation is thought, is thought to be a process of spiritual evolution that allows the spirit to attain even greater levels of knowledge and morality in its journey towards perfection. Hindus believe that eternal souls goes through a progression of consciousness or samsara in six classes of life. So let us see those six classes of samsara that Hindus believe. Aquatics, plants, Leptures and insects, birds, animals, and human beings, including the residents of heaven. Six, six friends. Many people believe not in what they should believe, but in what they want to believe. If a theory brings them existential peace and comfort, that is enough for them to settle the discussion for them. But for those who take the Bible seriously, as I said before, if you take your Bible seriously, there is no way to accept the theory of reincarnation. First, this theory contradicts the biblical teachings of the immortality 
of the soul and the resurrection of the body as we see it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Second, it negates the doctrine of salvation by grace through faith in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ and replace it with human works. Third, this theory contradicts the biblical teachings that one's eternal destiny is decided forever by one's decision in this life. Fourth, friends, this theory downplays the meaning of relevance of Christ's second coming. And fifth, this theory proposes after death opportunities for someone still to overcome his or her own life pitfalls, which is unbiblical. In short, friends, there is no place for the idea of reincarnation in the Christian faith. No place, friend, for the idea of reincarnation in the Christian faith. Friend, let us see now the last, last, last one. Last topic is necromancy and ancestral worship. Ancestral worship. The word necromancy deri derives from the Greek terms necros, dead, and mantella, mantella, divination. Pre practices since the ancient times, necromancy is a form of summoning the alleged active spirit of the dev in order to obtain knowledge, op often about the future events. Ancestors worship. Meanwhile, in the custom of venerating deceased ancestors because they are still considered family, influence the affairs of the living. The pagan practices can be very attractive, friends, to those who believe in immoral soul and who also miss their deceased loved ones. So we can see in uh, first Samuel a story about the soul. So we're going to learn a spiritual lesson about uh, this story about uh, Saul, who went and consulted a medium, a woman medium. The biblical started very clearly that all spiritists, medium, sorcerers, and necromancers in the ancient Israel theocracy were abomination to the Lord and should be put to death by stunning. In accordance with this law, Saul has destroyed all medium and spirits from Israel. So the king Saul has followed this rule and has destroyed all sorcerers, all mediums in his kingdom. So what happened? After being rejected by the Lord, Saul himself went to the Canaanite city of Indo to inquire of a woman who was a medium. We see it in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 6. So he asked her to bring up the deceased prophet Samuel, who supposedly came up in a necromancer apparition and spoke with Saul and spoke with Saul. The deceiving spirit who pretended to be Samuel told Saul tomorrow. So when Saul went and see this pretended spirit of Samuel, see what this spirit told to, to, to Saul. He said, tomorrow Saul, you and your sons will be with me. Bad story, bad news, right? While predicting, predicting Saul's death, that deceiving spirit Mary, by assuming the form of Samuel, reaffirmed the unbiblical theory, theory of the natural immortality of Saul. It was a powerful, a powerful deception, friends. And Saul should have known better than to become involved in this trick. 
So he condemned himself, actually. He had previously condemned himself. More than two centuries later, the prophet Isaiah wrote all this one. So listen. And when they say to you, Seek those who are medium and wizard, who whisper and mutter, should not should 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 not should not a people seek their God, their God, should they seek the dead on behalf of the living, the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to his word. It is because there is no light in them. Hallelujah. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There is no light in them. How often, friends, under stress, how often under stress do we think that we know that we know are wrong. Why are faith, prayer, and obedience to the word of God our only sure defense against ourselves? Friend, what I can say is that the only the word of God, on the Bible, please study the Bible carefully and listen to what our God is telling us. Do not go and consult medium. Do not go and consult sorcerers. No. Have confidence. Have trust in the word of God. So the last one, the last one is the person, personation and other appearances. Similar to the necromancy or demoniac personations of the dead or other demoniac appearances, the personations can be in the form of deceased family member, friend, and anyone. Both, both the physical appearance uh, and the voice are very similar to those who were deceased. All this satanic deception will be used to deceive those who are not firmly grounded in God's word. So, the Apostle Paul warns us that our struggle is not against enemies, our blood or flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly in the very places. So we see it in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We can be protected against those deception only by being crossed with the whole armor of God. We should cross the armor of of God so we will be protected by those bad bad teachings. The satanic personations and appearance can be very frightening and deceiving, but they cannot mislead those who are shattered by God and grounded in God's word. Hallelujah. From a doctrinal perspective, those who believe in the biblical doctrine of conditional immortality of human being know that any appearance of communication with the dead is of satanic origin and needs to be rejected by God's powerful grace. Again, no matter how powerful, convincing, and seemingly real, friends, the manifestation is we must always stand firm on the teachings that the dead are asleep in the grave. Imagine, True, losing a loved one and then believing that this same loved one appears to you and expresses to love you and tells you how much he miss you and say things that yes, only they would know and says that they, they are now in a better place. If person is not absolutely grounded in what the Bible teaches about the state of the dead, things of how is he or she could fail for this deception, especially because they want to believe it as well. So, friends, what 
Does it mean to be put on the whole armor of God? We should only shelter in the arms of God. In day to day, we should practice sense. We should do in every area of lives, of lives, we should deal only with the word of God so that we can avoid those deception. So friend, this is a, a summary of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you understand. And what, what, is, uh, what is really very important is to understand that no matter what happened, no matter what the teachings we are receiving, we should put our trust only in the word of God, in Jesus. We should trust Jesus and it's going to help us to overcome those deceptions. God bless you. God keep you. See you next week.